Once upon a time, in the ancient lands of the East, there existed a mighty empire known as Parthia, which lasted from 247 BCE to 224 CE, was a significant power that extended from the Mediterranean in the West to India and China in the East. It originated from a nomadic Scythian tribe known as the Parni, who later became the Parthians. They rose to prominence by taking over the Seleucid Empire and successfully resisting Roman incursions. Seleucus I, a general of Alexander the Great, established the Seleucid Empire after Alexander's death. Parthia was initially a satrapy within this empire, situated southeast of the Caspian Sea. Exploiting the Seleucids' internal conflicts and weakened state, the Parni, led by Arsaces, seized control of Parthia in 247 BCE. Although Antiochus III of the Seleucid Empire briefly regained Parthia in 209 BCE, Arsaces II was reinstated by the Parthian elite. Subsequently, Phryapatius ascended to the throne, followed by his son Phryates, who expanded Parthia's territory by conquering neighboring regions. Phryates chose his brother Mithridates as his successor, leading to Parthia's greatest period of expansion under Mithridates' reign. This expansion laid the foundation for Parthia's prominence in the ancient world, and Mithridates II, successor to Artabanus I, became one of Parthia's most illustrious rulers. Under his reign, Parthia witnessed significant territorial expansions and military conquests. Mithridates II strengthened Parthia's control over Elam, Kerosene, Mesopotamia, and Bactria, while also annexing Albania and Armenia. Notably, he captured the strategic Syrian city of Dura Europov in the west, further solidifying Parthia's status as a dominant force in the region. With its frontiers now stretching from the Mediterranean Sea to China, Parthia emerged as a geographical powerhouse and a true superpower in the ancient world. However, challenges loomed on the horizon, particularly from the Roman Empire. During the reign of Phryates III, Parthia suffered losses to Rome, including Armenia, Albania, and parts of northern Mesopotamia. Phryates III's sons ultimately assassinated him due to these defeats, leading to internal strife and civil unrest within Parthia. Amidst this turmoil, Orodes II ascended to the throne and initiated a series of military campaigns to reclaim lost territories and consolidate Parthian authority. In 53 BCE, the Roman triumvir Crassus invaded Parthia near Carre, only to face a devastating defeat at the hands of Orodes II's general, Serena. The Parthian victory dealt a severe blow to Roman morale and influence in the region. Subsequently, the Parthians regained Armenia following the defeat of Mark Antony in 32 BCE, further enhancing their position in the Near East. These victories prompted Rome to seek a peace agreement with Parthia, allowing both empires to focus their military efforts elsewhere and expand their respective domains. Parthian military tactics played a pivotal role in these triumphs. The Parthians' adept use of cavalry and archery, employing hit-and-run tactics and the infamous Parthian shot, proved highly effective against enemy forces. With their skilled horsemen and heavily armored cavalry, known as cataphracts, the Parthians were able to outmaneuver and overwhelm their opponents on the battlefield, ensuring the continued expansion and dominance of the Parthian Empire. And Parthia's government was structured to efficiently address local needs while maintaining centralized authority under the King of Kings. Mithridates I, an early Parthian ruler, cleverly integrated Greek nobles into positions of leadership to ensure the continuity of economic and bureaucratic affairs. This approach, coupled with Mithridates' appreciation for Greek culture, fostered stability and cooperation within the empire. Greek settlements were permitted autonomy as long as they paid tribute to the king, minimizing the risk of rebellion. To prevent the concentration of power, Parthia divided its provinces into smaller administrative units called eparchies. This decentralized system helped mitigate the risk of rebellion and ensured effective governance throughout the empire. Additionally, Parthia allowed conquered kingdoms within its territory to retain their own monarchs, providing financial support and military assistance as needed. With the Roman threat subdued, Parthia capitalized on trade opportunities. The Fertile Crescent region, with its decentralized governance structure, flourished as a hub of international commerce during the first two centuries CE. Parthia's strategic acquisitions, such as Armenia, Hyrcania, and Persis, provided access to lucrative markets in Central Asia and India. The preservation of infrastructure inherited from the Seleucids, including cities and trade routes, facilitated Parthia's economic growth. The Royal Road, running from Mesopotamia to Bactria, solidified Parthia's position as a key player in international trade. Moreover, contact with China was established through the expansionist policies of the Han Dynasty. 
Chinese envoys visited Parthia in 115 BCE, laying the groundwork for future trade agreements and cultural exchange between the two empires, and Parthian art and architecture were deeply influenced by the empire's diverse cultural heritage and strategic location. Spanning from China and Central Asia to Mesopotamia and Syria, Parthia's artistic legacy is testament to its rich cultural exchange and innovation. Unlike their predecessors, the Seleucid Greeks, the Parthians developed a distinct artistic style, distinctively their own. They blended influences from both the East and West, creating a unique amalgamation that bore the unmistakable mark of Parthian identity. In architecture, the Parthians departed from the conventional Hellenistic designs favored by the Greeks. While they retained some elements, such as columns and pediments, they introduced graceful arches and embraced circular motifs. Parthian temples, like the one at Hatra, featured a striking combination of Greek and Parthian architectural elements, with multiple arches adding a unique flair. Circularity was a prominent feature in Parthian architecture, evident in the layout of cities and fortresses. From the circular ramparts of Karai to the circular planning of Nisa, Parthian architects embraced innovative designs that set them apart from their predecessors. At Nisa, the original Parthian capital, architects constructed a dome with walls running to the ground, influenced by Central Asian architecture. This departure from conventional Roman domes showcased the Parthians' penchant for experimentation and adaptation. In Parthian art, frontal motifs were prevalent, creating a direct connection between the subject and the viewer. Figures often gazed straight ahead, exuding a sense of personal engagement. This stylistic choice, later adopted by the Byzantines, reflected the Parthians' desire for intimacy and interaction in their artistic expression. Parthian artistry extended beyond sculptures to include intricate metalwork, bronze figures, and decorative interior walls adorned with vibrant stucco patterns. These artistic expressions adorned Parthian cities, adding beauty and sophistication to their surroundings, and served as a testament to Parthia's cultural richness and creative ingenuity. The Parthians had a mix of liberal and uniform practices in their culture and religion. While they were open to various artistic and architectural styles, their clothing choices were more uniform, especially among the ruling class. By the end of the first century BCE, a belted tunic and trouser suit became fashionable across the empire. Their clothing was loose-fitted with many horizontal pleats, often exaggerated, and nobles typically sported lengthy mustaches, groomed beards, and a puffed hairstyle secured with a headband. In a vast empire with diverse faiths, identifying rulers by their attire was crucial. Since favoring one religion could lead to rebellion, Parthian governors enforced uniform dress codes. Zoroastrianism, with its dualistic worldview and veneration of Ahura Mazda, was widespread. However, Western Parthia still revered elements like rivers, lakes, and trees. Greeks, Babylonians, and an enclave of Jews worshipped their respective deities. Christians also emerged towards the end of the Parthian period. While the Parthians' own beliefs remain unclear, their tolerance towards different faiths was instrumental in their 500-year rule. After victories over Roman generals like Crassus and Mark Antony, the Parthians faced external invasions and internal strife, Despite Artabanus II's successful suppression of rebellion, pressures mounted from the east and west, Trajan's invasion in 115 CE, and Lucius Verus's attacks in 165 CE, severely weakened Parthia. Though they repelled the Romans, repeated invasions devastated Mesopotamia. Eventually, in the 3rd century, internal conflict paved the way for Ardashir to overthrow the weakened Parthian Empire and establish the Sasanian Empire in 224 CE.